That's the fire to Act four. Helena Glide land, night roaring surf. The storm is howling. A gigantic wave moves up, breaks the moving. S- the water splashes high up, moving coach. Night, Annie is asleep. The storm is pushing against the windows, opening. Then the curtain is bellowing and fluttering in the wind. Annie wakes up, confused, terrified. She jumps up. She tries to shut the window, yet she cannot bring herself to do it. The storm is pushing her back. She recalls. She runs out to the room, waves, Elaine. Annie wakes up, carriage, Elaine, walking forward, waves, carriage, hunter. Annie wakes up, waves, Annie, An- Elaine, Annie, boat. The storm is sweeping through the open window. The bed is empty. Annie enters. She knows at once what has happened. Rushes out. Elaine, her clothes fluttering in the wind, her hair like a flag, is sleepwalking in the storm. She stretches out her arms defensively, a white figure against the black night sky. Cordial clouds. Cordial North Sea, High Sea, the storm is raging, enormous high of the waves. In distance, the sailing ship, the new data. A full sail, racing to its premeditation trick. The storm is tossing in the tossing in the trees, sending about moving towards its objective. Wismar, the storm rages violently. The stand bank threatens. Demeter, the fatal ship, has come closer, still moving at full speed. View from the sea towards the harbour. Sending ships are coming in at full sail. Conjure Wismar, trick. Elaine runs out, room, around an axle. Elaine runs through garden. Ship moves towards the objective knock. Why ship coming into the harbour? Hunter running through the street knock. Ship is in the harbour. Nesfrutu appears. Hunter running through the street. Nesfrutu through gate. The coffin. Door hunter do not knock escape. Nesfrutu square or street room. Elaine in Annie's arms, her hair is fluttering in the wind. Elaine stretching her hands towards the sea, who trying to defend herself. I must go home. He's coming. In the foreground and the crosses, the crosses in the back, sand bank and cliffs, far distance people hurrying to the rescue of the wreck. The sand bank, the ship crashes into it, turns over on its side, view from an archway. The sailing ship is moving past Vestima. Knock below, he drags up a, a chair to the window. He climbs up on it to it. Knock pulls himself up to the bars. Bring it, trying to look out. The wind blowing in makes his hair stand up on end. And cavalry, dead and forsaken, the rope is dangling from the deck. <coughs> He's swaying in the wind. An endless number of rats climbing down the room with swaying rope. The hatch opens slowly. Nesafertu climbs out. He carries the last coffin. Remains standing motionless. An image of death. Then he approaches slowly. Ship anchored and harbour dissolved. Ship's hatch with a piece of deck. Trick. Canvas high lays away from the hatch. Hatch lid is lifted. The hats are crushing on deck. Crushing on deck. Nesafertu coffin. In arm line climbs out. Distenberg of the old Tervalen world. Trees shaken by storm, a carriage races up, stops abruptly. Hunter jumps from the carriage. An axle is broken. The coachman seems at loss. Hunter cannot wait. He leaves the carriage and runs off. Vesema Nesafutu enters the town. Elaine's room at Hardings. Elaine Ernie, Elaine suddenly breaks away, overjoyed as if she had a happy vision. She throws her arms and shouts, I must go to him. He is coming. She moves off and vanishes. Annie wrings her hands in despair. Storm tossed trees. A white figure comes out of the house. It's Elaine. She's running through the park. Perhaps Lindenberg Street shunted windows. Nisifardu striding. Hunter running alone in the street, along the street. Knock. Moving away from the window wall. A madman is listening for the outside noises. 
as if he had received a signal from the other world. Triumphantly, he whispers to himself, The master is near, the master is near. Suddenly he listens attentively. He creeps over to the door where he waits expectantly. The door opens, the attendant appears. He looks around in the room, not noticing that knock is behind him. Knock creeps carefully behind, behind his back. Suddenly the frightened the attendant turns around. Knock makes for his throat like a vampire. The attendant falls over. Man is at his throat for a moment, a moment late only. When he lets go and sneaks out, Adam comes running up. He looks up, no light. He's just about to enter the, when somebody's calling. He turns around a lane. They fall into each other's arms. Square from where fountain, the Fertil's cabin, under his arm is standing in the middle of the square. Look around to orientate yourself. He strides on, Elaine's sitting room. A lamp is shining, Hunter and Elaine. They're sitting on the close lounge. This happiness of being reunited is too much overpowered by emotion. He sinks down on her arm. Nassafrus is staring up. Elaine's room, Hunter and Elaine on the chist long. He sits up looking deep in her eyes. Thank God you are well. Everything has come all right. She does not understand him. But the joy of being together again is so stronger than anything else. The room is bright. There is nobody about. But in the middle of the street stands Nosferatu, hidden by the night, carrying the coffin. Slowly turns his head and looks over to the hunter's house. There is a friendly light in the window. Empty, carrying the coffin, Nosferatu appears in the picture. Nosferatu once more, he turns his head. He looks over to the other side. The deserted house is over there. He makes for that now, walking slowly. He goes on into the un, into the house. The captain collapses in death. He's tied to the helm. The foreground, some men, hiding among them, are climbing up on deck. They are aghast at the terrible sight. The dead captain, tied to the helm, is discharged of his duty. One hand is still on his helm. The other holding a crucifix, clutching his heart, chest in a mortal agony. His hand sh- shrunk back. Face distorted. There are two red marks on his neck. Harding, he cannot comprehend the horror. The ship was anchored. The ship's deck sank. The hatch opens. Thus, Frotu, coughing under his arm, flows out. Steps are on the quarry. The stranded ship is in sight. It is night time. It is blowing wind. Nocturnal figures. Townspeople. Down a hole tilled hulk. A man is climbing like a rope. By the light of the torch, the captain of the harbour, with a number of old people, looking like fishermen, the chamber approaches and reports. Anything has been examined. No living soul on board. Captain receives a port, jots down some notes. Night. But board with helm. Some men are lifting the dead captain and carry off the corpse. Holding alone, he finds a book next to Merce's head and is fixed to the helm. In light of a dim lantern, he reads the book, of the page of the book, Friday, July 12th. Crew, apart from myself, the captain, and five sailors, demanding for the Dundalies. Harding shakes his head. He is puzzled on deck. Harding emerges from the cabin with a book in his hand. Night, daytime. A large hole on the walls, a number of figureheads. Models of ships are suspended from the ceiling. Dead captains carried in. Lying in state, Dr. Savise is examining him. He notices the marks on his chet neck. Dr. Savise turns to Harding. He too cannot make sense of this case. Nevertheless, he talks incessantly. Harding comes closer, shows him the notebook. Both of them are reading the notebook, a page. Second day, July 13th, a sailor has fallen ill with a fever. Of course, SSW, direction of wind. Third day, July 14th. Mate is talking strangely. He says there is an unknown passion below deck. Course, SE, direction of wind, any spread of volume of wind, 3.6. Seavers and Hardy are looking. Jabber, Seavers, white beard is trembling. They continue reading. Tenth day, July 22nd. Rats in the ship's hold, danger of plague. Hardy had been reading this aloud. Now Stevens understands it at last. He points at the book with his finger. Danger of plague. That's what it is. Danger plague. He calls out, Danger plague, go home. Shut all your windows and doors. 
Very completely frightened, the baby Santas move, move away. The women put the ends of their hair scuffs into their mouths, panic stricken. The crowd leaves the scene. Nobody is about a set in the centre of the square. The town drummer with his large drum, the drummer, he beats a mighty roll. A closed window, the hatch opens, and the window's head disappears. Totally is emaciated, sunken cheeks, long, dishevelled hair. Disease has gripped a two on the neck, the anonymous little marks. The drummer's produce a piece of paper and read it aloud. All the citizens are notified. The honourable magistrate of this town prevents prevents any movement to play sex acts in the hospitals to prevent the play from spreading through the streets. Drummer is finished reading and goes off.